What is up guys, this is Rito back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest 11.3 Evolution X and this is the Android 16 build and the build date here is of 14th October 2025 and obviously it has the latest October security patch and stuff but about the Evolution X ROMs well some updates does have a little bit of issues and some updates does fix those issues and bring more improvements to the UI. The previous build of this had some issues and I actually faced device heating up a lot and the battery was like draining there was some kind of memory leak that has been mentioned in the changelog of this I'll show you the changelog and stuff and all the improvements mostly that I can find but if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your POCO A5 do check the video out from the description box below I have made separate how to flash guides to actually get you an idea so that you can actually flash the ROMs perfectly into the Android version section this is how it looks like in the white theme I have been using this greenish kind of accent it is from the wallpaper and here let me show you the Android version obviously is Android 16 here and we have the Evolution X logo up top as usual the Evolution X version shows up as 11.3 and there is October 1st 2025 security patch and the stock kernel you can see right here and the build maintainer is still Joe and huge thanks to the developer of this ROM if you want to support this ROM link to donate to the developer will be listed in the description so do consider that the build date here is mentioned again 13th October 2025 by the way in my previous review of the Evolution X ROM I have said that I wanted to switch to Infinity X but I didn't because I just got consistent updates on this ROM and I have kept updating it if you don't know how to manually dirty flash or update the ROM I have made separate videos for that as well if you go into the Evolution X website from here you can just download the latest build and dirty flash it if you are already using this ROM and that should work for like updating the ROM by the way here it will show the build date which is available later and in terms of the changelog of this let me show you there are a couple of device changes which are mentioned and there are a lot of ROM changes right here as this add dynamic charging ripple switch bring back wallpaper blur and dim feature there is some fix regarding the Bluetooth as well it used to disconnect some Bluetooth devices and there is one more fix about this memory leak kind of thing I think that was causing the battery drain and the device used to get hot a lot and I have actually faced that when I was outdoors from 45% within one hour the device reached about 19% so that was like not normal with the latest build I haven't faced those kind of issues anymore so pretty much that I can confirm that memory leak bug has been fixed and we have a hell lot more things you can notice from right here huge amount of change log you can say but I'll show you overall how the UI actually looks in case if you're wondering in the app settings yes there are still the cloned apps and stuff so you can have two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook from here we have the app lock right here we have the game space so that you can add any game and you can watch the FPS and stuff and do recording on the game screen and we have the assistant customization and the sidebar feature is obviously there and we have sidebar for selected apps as well now some notable ROM change you can say in the display settings you will find the refresh rate here it shows screen refresh rate right here and if you go into the minimum and maximum refresh rate right now you can see 60 90 and 120 I have been using it with the 60 and 90 and even 120 is working super fine no need to worry about it but let me show you in the per app refresh rate earlier we used to only get 60 and 120 I guess but 90 wasn't there but right now we obviously have the 60 90 and 120 separately so yeah you do get a per app refresh rate up to 90 hertz as well if you would like that so this is one thing and there is extreme refresh rate right here so that the whole UI will always run at 120 hertz if you just enable this toggle so these are some new things you can say there are enhanced HDR brightness and there is double tap to sleep and stuff high touch pooling rate display saturation kind of customization is there and the color profiles and stuff you can have right here we have the live display kind of customization for the display colors RGB control and we have the night light right here and we also have the dark theme obviously you can set it to third party apps as well right now I mean dark mode specifically for the third party apps there is pure black and if I just enable the dark theme just notice how fast it can switch to the dark theme and just disable it just notice yeah the whole UI turns dark and light just like this so yeah, it's a very fluid experience I would say and here also in the flashlight settings there is obviously this flashlight brightness customization right now and it works 100% of the time and you can edit and add multiple toggles from right here obviously there are huge huge amount of toggles that you can edit and add also one more bug that I have faced is when I was using Bluetooth devices when I was playing back video in video players like VLC and stuff it used to get stuck sometimes but that used to happen I think depending on the Dolby Atmos maybe but right now even with Dolby Atmos I haven't faced any kind of issues with those 
So yeah, Bluetooth has been working seamlessly on the latest update. And it does have all the fast fading kind of feature. Let me show you. I have actually made an unboxing video about this Realme Buds Air 7. With the Realme Buds Air 7, shows all the things like the left earbud battery, right earbud battery, and even the case's battery right here shows up in the normal Bluetooth settings. This looks so beautiful. And yeah, all these functionalities and stuff are working properly here. You can check out the video of Realme Buds Air 7 from the cards right here but I will be actually reviewing it soon. So stay tuned for that. In the system settings, we still have the button settings right here and you can have the long press for button toggle torch and stuff. Then there is gesture settings. There is a separate three finger swipe option and in here you can customize it to multiple different options like recent app switcher, search assistant, launch camera and other things. But obviously I have been using it just for taking a screenshot. There is three finger long press also. If you just do this three finger and hold, you can select some particular area and only that area will be included in the screenshot and of course the normal three finger screenshot gesture should be working fine with capture mode and everything and we have the one handed mode and stuff working flawlessly quick tap is also there you can use it we have the double press on the power button to actually launch camera yes you have to actually select which camera you are willing to launch but yeah this actually works flawlessly no need to worry there is navigation mode and stuff in the settings of it we have navigation hint and IME button space back gesture height swipe to invoke assistant long press to search circle to search all these things are there you can swipe from the corners to have the Gemini right here also let me open some post on X and here if I just hold on the pill bar it will launch the circle to search kind of thing and yeah it just works flawlessly just notice also with the circle to search you can translate the text and even search for music as well i think yeah usb configuration is there you can set it to file transfer for convenience obviously there is a system updater you can check for updates from right here even without enabling the pixel kind of props let me show you if you go into the edit with google photos and if you go into action and if you double tap on a particular area there is this subject select kind of option there is portrait blur it is and move and reimagine kind of options and these are like involving with the AI and stuff so you can move the object I think as you can see if I just hit move over here let's wait for the time being for the results so it looks weird but yeah the subject actually has moved but I'll just close it for the time being there is portrait blur of course and with this you can control the bokeh effect as you can see it is looking beautiful even the depth you can actually customize but yeah the normal magic eraser just works better and there are the other features of google photos you can use there is component spoofing i have been using the update predictability fix and stuff i would say yes my banking apps have been working fine i haven't tried the google pay recently but except google pay most other banking apps like amazon pay mobiquick and phone pay all these things even super money app all these things should be working fine and there is the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher pc in games you can also enable pixel like features tensor feature then we have the google app spoof just like a pixel device it might work by the way let me show you don't check the play integrity multiple times but i'm just showing you for the sake of this video here it shows all three has been passed i haven't rooted or anything this is just straight out of the box i have been just using a key box and i'll just link a video for that in the description if you have not passed the safety net right out of the box on your device by the way the battery widget and everything it's totally working fine no need to worry and even the clock widget just notice that animation how beautiful it works obviously it has the pixel launcher which has been working very smoothly it has the google dialer and also has the bcr so you can have the call recording option i have this on disable battery optimization and stuff and here is the output format that i have been using you can take a screenshot and use this if you want to use the bcr on your rom 5g speeds are working flawlessly i haven't faced any issues so far with it and even geo's vonr calling is actually working as you can see i placed a call and right now it is showing 5g over there so pretty much 5g always stays most of the time on geo at least here in my location and you can change the output device from right here you can have more cellular video calling is working fine new ui of google dialer looks great here the recent panel looks like this there is a screenshot select and if you want to get the clear all option you have to go all the way to the left you can clear all the apps from memory and here let me show you there is split screen there is screenshot select option and stuff by the way in the wallpapers and styles if you go into the more wallpapers you will have plethora of wallpapers here right out of the box like there are these contours the aura forms come alive or the live wallpapers even the living universe you can download these 
and just notice these wallpapers they are looking so beautiful here a lot of wallpapers right here so yeah google provides a lot of wallpapers in the wallpapers and styles right here and there are the lock screen clock styles of android 16 you can say huge huge amount of clock styles obviously you can customize the left and right shortcut of the lock screen now let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like and right now there is thermal profiles so you can set per apps thermal profile to performance and stuff if you would like to there are other options as well like browser camera dialer gaming streaming navigation and the video mode there is charging control but if you enable that your fast charging speeds will just drop again and in the battery information you can see my battery stats for my device the battery cycle count shows a lot like 147 cycles that's a huge amount of cycle but even with this battery you can see the other things like the battery temperature and everything obviously the maximum capacity here shows as 75 percent i'll show you with the aqua battery app the estimated battery life that i have got here it shows about seven hours of screen on time well i would say it's a little bit more because it has dropped a lot from the previous update with that update it has degraded this screen on time calculation a lot because there was a lot of battery draining involved but here you can get about seven and a half hours of screen on time without any problems the screen off shows as 33 hours or even more than that so that's huge and the combine use shows as about 11 hours and 50 minutes that's because again because of the previous update that i was on and the health section for me this is again an estimated number here it shows 79 percent so with thousand plus battery cycles i would say this is really good battery life and the fast charging and everything should be working fine here you don't need to worry about it in terms of the security settings yes there is a device unlock and in the settings of it you get all these things obviously there is face unlock and fingerprint both but i have been using just the fingerprint that has been working great even with app lock and stuff let me show you i have locked this telegram app and it shows this kind of UI. Once I try to open it, I have to tap the fingerprint scanner. And once it detects the registered fingerprint scanner, it opens and goes wherever I left it. And the RAM management here on the latest build, no problems whatsoever. And there is advanced protection kind of mode right here. These are Android 16 kind of features again. And even in the mode settings, there is theft protection as well. So it can you can say it's a snatch kind of protection. So all these kind of functionalities are there. High developer option is there for some apps. If you have developer options enabled, might not work that's why there is that high developer status you can use it there is private space of android 16 as well you can use that too let me just clear everything so that you can see how much time it takes to open a particular app like let's open chrome twitter or x play store let's open instagram as well google home apps like this show me me home kind of app let's open this edits and youtube create kind of app now if i just start switching between all these apps as you can see everything stays in memory so the ram management here it's really good but i have the base variant of the poco a5 guys this is not the 12 gb ram variant even but overall switching between apps it's not a problem even let's open camera let's open another camera now if i start switching between those apps <laughs> so the camera actually showed something else like an error but yeah overall it has been working flawlessly as you can see all the apps are staying in memory no issues whatsoever that i have faced and here are the benchmarks of this rom so that you can get an idea about the overall ui performance of this rom with the latest 13th October 2025 build. Now let's talk about the camera. Well, we have the Poco camera right here and if you swipe up, you'll get a lot of things like panorama, short film, slow motion and the other things you can notice. There is photo mode and there is 0.6 1x and the 2x kind of modes. There is portrait mode even with the front camera, the portrait mode should be working fine here. No need to worry. As you can see, there is that background bokeh and stuff. I'll give you some samples so that you can get an idea. But in the video settings, with the rear camera you can get up to 4k and 30 fps 60 fps isn't there still as you can see 60 fps is disabled if you go 4k but you can switch to 1080p and then shoot 60 fps videos if you'd like to but yeah, overall it works fine there is documents mode there is pro mode you can shoot pro mode videos if you'd like to there's night mode 64 megapixel mode all these things are working great and taking a photo it's not a problem at all just notice how fast you can take a photo and the overall quality of this it's just really awesome i would say as you can see the overall quality of the photos are really fine and you can obviously use gcams and stuff if you'd like to 
and you can shoot 4k 60 piece videos with this gcam i have made separate video about this you can check it out from the description box below you can change the color temperature and stuff with this gcam and you can also change the mic if you'd like to so overall the 13th october 2025 build of the evolution x version 11.3 i have been totally enjoying it on the poco f5 and with the consistent updates i feel this is really still one of my favorite roms one of the best experiences so far the consistency of evolution x it's just awesome in a day i've got two separate updates if there are some issues so that kind of consistency for a custom rom i would say with android 16 it's just really one of the best things out there for us and for the custom rom community in my opinion let me know in the comments what you guys think about this rom and if you like this video please share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you have not yet hit this is Tito from kdndx signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now